we're going to set up an email account in Outlook Express. If this is your first time ever running the program, then it will ask you the questions to set up your email account automatically. For me, it's not the first time running the program, so I need to go to Tools, Accounts, Add, Mail. The first question is Display Name. What name will be displayed when someone receives an email from me? Are they going to see Clancy's Car Wash? Or will they just see my name, Clancy? I want them to see my name. My first name is good enough, but if I want, I can show them my full name. Or I can even combine that with my business name. Let your imagination run wild. Okay, next email address what is my email address you're not creating one because email addresses are only created by super wonderful people that run servers for you that's probably not you there's probably a technician there's a geek somewhere that makes an account for you you gotta talk to the geek because they've already made it and they can tell you the values that you need to put in to make this work and use your account that they created. I happen to be a geek and I made an account for myself. This is my account name. Next. We have a choice between POP3, IMAP, and HTTP. HTTP is used for uh, online mail, uh, like if you're using a Hotmail account. However, it's kind of old stuff and it's weird and geeky and you're probably not going to use it. It's actually not good to use that one. Uh, most likely you're going to use POP3 if you're like everybody else. But if you want to have some special benefits and if your mail server supports it and it probably does then I highly recommend using IMAP now the benefits of IMAP is that it's uh, it's a little bit newer than POP3 and it gives you the ability to put your mail on more than one computer and your mail is always synchronized correctly that means like if you go to your home and you download some email you work on it um, it's not automatically going to delete everything off of the server that you downloaded uh, for example you do some work at home then you go to your work office and you want to ask, you want to see the same stuff that you saw at home no go you can't do that you can only do that if you're using IMAP. That keeps you synchronized across all your computers. It's good for people on the go that have more than one access point. It's also a little bit more secure. For example, maybe uh, you do some work at home and email is at home on your home computer and then you go to your work computer and while you're at work your home burns to the ground and there's nothing left of your computer. It's a big pile of ashes. Well, where did your email go? Well, if you're using IMAP, then all that email is safe on your computer. So there's plenty of reasons to use it. If it's supported, just use it. IMAP also lets you use folders, but we're not going to talk about that in this video. You're not cool enough yet. Okay when you're doing mail you receive email and you send email what an amazing concept the reason why I'm saying such interesting things is because your mail client might use different servers or different settings both for sending and for receiving and the details for how to set up your account come from the geek so talk to the geek for me I use this mail dot 
servername.com. Like that. If the geek is not available, then for common values would be IMAP. But that's only if you're using IMAP. Or if you're using POP3, then it could be POP. For my server, which is cool, it handles both on the same thing, which is just mail dot whatever. Once again, talk to the geek. They'll tell you how to set this up. Click Next. And now we have an account name. And at this point, the geek probably didn't tell you what you log in with. He probably did give you a password. But uh, on certain mail servers, you log in just with the first part of your account name. At others, you have to give the entire account name. So let's take a look at how that uh, appears. My entire email address is my account name. That might work for you, or what works for you might be to just type the first part that appears before the at symbol. Don't be afraid to experiment. Try out a couple different settings just to find out what works. Okay, put in your password, and then if you're checking your email from a computer that is not secure, such as maybe you're going to a competitor's business and you're going to sit down and check out your email, do not use the option to remember your password. The option to remember your password should only be used either at work or at home where you feel safe. Next there's this question about whether or not your server uses SPA. Who knows? Just say no for now and click on next and then click on finish. Now you're back to here, click on close. It pops up a window. Do you want to download folders? Sure. It authorizes, it connects, it does wonderful things and then we're here. It didn't give us any error messages. That's good. That means everything is set up and it's working properly. Now, if your mail server, if, uh, if your mail account is not working properly, then you probably have to adjust some additional settings, which are now available for you. So click on it, do a right click go to properties and now we're going to take a look at some of the security settings which are available. Uh, from this interface we can change just about everything. We can change the server we use for incoming mail, mail that we receive, the server that we use for mail that we send, the outgoing mail server. We can change what value we use for our account name. Is it the entire email address or is it just the first part before the at symbol? Update the password, whether or not we remember. We can turn SPA on or off, both for the incoming server here and the outcoming ser outgoing server here. If you're doing something fancy, like connecting to Gmail, then you're going to have to update the port numbers that are used for the outgoing mail server and the incoming mail server. You can update those numbers right here. Other than that, there's really nothing else that you ever need to take a look at in order to set up an email account in Outlook Express. Now, uh, one of the primary benefits of IMAP mail is that you can have folders that are on the server. So I'm going to go to my inbox here, right click, new folder, folder name, 
whatever. Click OK. And now I've made this folder, but this folder is not on my computer. It's on the mail server, which is really cool because that means that other people can see what I put into that folder. Like I can make a folder called do this now shithead. I can put work in there and then I can send somebody a message and say, hey man, you forgot to do your work today. I put it into a special folder for you. And then they can go there. Of course, you'll probably name your folders something more appropriate. This is Clancy, and now you know how to set up your email. If you have any questions, just ask me. I'll do my best to help you out.